So part of the story with this system is the drop in temperature on the back side of it. We're already seeing some wow. of that in the middle of the country. Yeah. If 40 degree temperature changes in an hour. Yeah, under that, uh, there was one yesterday, it was 43 degrees and it was in, in the teens amount of minutes, like 18 or something like that. And yeah. that's what we're going to experience. Yeah, I don't know if it'll be quite that level, but we're certainly gonna drop from, okay, say the coast tomorrow is gonna be about 50 and we're gonna be down into 16, 17 by that okay. night. So that's fast enough. Yeah, it's cause some damage. I am interested to see exactly the speed of that, but only the weenies will be tracking it. The rest <laughs> of us will just say, whoa, that's so much colder. And uh, today is just cloudy as we wait for that storm system to continue to develop off to our south and west. And finally, it looks like a version of the storm that is making headlines, right? Uh, we've got this low right here, another front. That's the cold front that dropped temperature. So quickly across parts of the northern plains and uh, upper Midwest. Those all come together in our storm, and that's when things really get going tonight and it's tomorrow for our region. It's really more about uh, tomorrow. So our bar forecast is fine for the rest of today. Isolated sprinkle can't be ruled out. There's a little moisture in the air. Most of us, though, wait until later tonight. We're talking 9, 10 or for western Maine and then after midnight for the rest of us and we'll start as snow in the foothills and mountains. Just be aware of that. The rest of us will start as rain and that's what will be the entire time. Snow does hang on a little bit longer than originally uh, we thought, you know, a couple of days ago in the mountains, which is good news for them. And then the rain really picks up tomorrow early morning through the middle of the day. And I think we'll see probably two peak wind gusts here. One in the morning over southern Maine and western Maine when this uh, front, this area of precipitation comes through. And then we'll see another one come through in the afternoon with the front itself. So here we are Friday morning, really heavy rain and wind over southern and central parts of the state, eventually into down east Maine by about the middle of the day into the early afternoon. We get a bit of a break and there's our secondary maximum wind gust here, three, four o'clock and then five, six o'clock over down east Maine. We get that out of here. Now just keep in mind, we were 55 according to this model in the afternoon. Watch these temperatures down into the single digits, into the teens, and that will happen very quickly and we will see that flash freeze occur. So I don't know how to look at this. This is the one map I was hoping I would change uh, over the last couple of days, but I don't see any reason to. I think we're still in this zone where 70 is attainable, 65 is easily attainable in the shaded uh, pink color here, 55 to 65 is also very attainable over the southern coastline. There will be less wind uh, activity inland and fewer power outages as a result of that. The rain is still an issue too, two inches up to three inches. Some of this will be snow in the mountains, but also they'll melt some snow. So the combination of that means we're all under a flood watch until the storm is over. And if you're a skier or winter enthusiast, you want to know how this is going to end up for the mountains. I still think you net lose snow because you might get five or six inches, but you're probably going to vaporize a ton of snow when you get in the warm sector. But it could have been a lot worse. It won't be a complete destruction of uh, ski areas and, and whatnot uh, out of this storm. And the last thing, and, and maybe this should have been earlier in the forecast, this is going to be a big deal for coastal flooding because we're looking at a tide that is already very close to uh, flood stage by itself, and it's certainly going to get pushed over flood stage. The modeling right now has it as a top three flood stage event for Portland. So that's big, right? And you'll notice a coastal watch over down East Maine where we don't think it coincides quite as well with the high tide situation there. So all that happens and then everything refreezes Friday night into Saturday. It is quiet for Christmas and really thereafter as we talked about. But I think it was, I saw CMP and Verson are already kind of saying, look guys, <clears throat> this is probably gonna go on a couple days. Right. And I think if the forecast is even in the ballpark right, I think that's the expectation that we have to Yeah, I don't think we can here. be surprised at that. Um, no. Especially after last weekend, we saw what that caused amplify right. that now. And they're gonna have, and this is a situation where they have to wait a while to put crews out because they can't the put them up in those down. cherry pickers. Right. Yeah, so okay, hope for the best. we'll wait and see. Yeah. Keith, thanks so much.